Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with a couple of wedding floral themed cards using the Honey Bee Spring Blossoms stamp set. So I have my Tim Holtz travel stamp platform here and some Distress watercolor cardstock that is the pre-cut four and a quarter by five and a half. And I have the smooth side of the cardstock facing up and I'm using my anti-static powder tool on that so that I can heat emboss my images. So I use my anti-static powder tool. I had lined up most of the stamps from this set and then I am going to stamp these images with VersaFine Onyx Black ink. I'm going to stamp them a few times to make sure I get, you know, all the detail and that everything is crisp and stamped nice and black. And then because VersaFine takes a little while to dry, I'm going to use that so that I can heat emboss everything with clear embossing powder. Um, totally not necessary. Like these VersaFine's great. I use it a lot for watercoloring and whatnot. It's just a fabulous ink and I love how just black it is. But I like doing the heat embossing with it because it creates those raised edges and then makes it a lot easier um, to watercolor because it kind of keeps everything contained so that one's, you know, one area is not running into the next. So I used Nouveau's clear embossing powder and then I let my heat tool heat up for a little bit before bringing it to my paper. And then I went over all of these images with my heat tool until they were completely smooth and melted. And I always like to tilt everything in the light because if there's any dull areas or grainy looking areas, those just need to be, you know, blasted with the heat tool to completely melt. And then for my watercoloring, I am working on my glass mat here and I have um, a few different colors of Distress Inks. I have sponge sugar, picked raspberry, mustard seed, and then mowed lawn and peeled paint. And I just smush those onto the little white glass area here as my little palette. And for all the flower petals, I'm using the sponge sugar and the picked raspberry and painting with my go-to little water brush here. And I just paint on the sponge sugar, which is just such a pretty pale pink. So I paint that on first and while it's still wet, I pick up the picked raspberry and I just kind of dab that at the base of all the petals. And then I pick up more of the sponge sugar without even cleaning my brush or anything and just use that to kind of as the middle shade in between to kind of blend the colors together so I don't end up with any harsh lines and then I just let it dry. So I go along and do that with all of the flower petals just working kind of basically from lighter to darker and because the sponge sugar is such a pale color and because I am using so much of it um, it gets really watered down to the point where it's more difficult to see when I'm painting with it so once it gets to that point I literally just wipe up what's left off my palette and then I smush the ink pad again so I get more of the actual concentrated um, ink color. And I normally end up having to do this um, regardless of whether it's a pale color or a dark color. It's just if it's one I'm using a lot and it just starts getting really watered down, um, I find it's easier to just wipe it off, smush my ink pad again, I'm good to go. So I went along and painted all of the flower petals the same way as well as the little bud there in the center with those two shades of pink. And then once I've got all those painted, I can go on and paint the greenery and the leaves. And that's where I'm using the mowed lawn and the peeled paint, which are not usually greens I would reach for. Like usually I do, you know, a lighter shade and a darker shade. These two are just very different shades of green, but I really like them together. I just, I like the color they make when I mix them. And I really like to paint things with the peeled paint and then drop in that mowed lawn. It just creates this really nice modeled effect for greenery. So I just kind of paint it on, mix it up a little bit, dab in some color, and then let it do its own thing as it dries. So I did that with all of the leaves and the greenery, and then for the flower centers and the little stamens, uh, that's what I used the mustard seed on. Just painted it on and it was done. So I let that completely dry, and it only takes a few minutes, but I wanna make sure this is completely dry before I run this through my die cut machine, because if it's still wet, it can um, tear very easily. So I make sure it's dry and then I'm going to go in and tape down all of the coordinating dies with bits of washi tape. So just line up all the dies and then tape them into place. That's also why I positioned the stamps the way I did, like trying to give them enough space in between. So I could tape down all of the dies at the same time so I can run this through with one pass through my die cut machine and have it all die cut. 
So after die cutting everything, I had all those stamps and I pulled them out of my um, travel stamp platform and just put them on acrylic blocks. And I stamped the card base with those same floral images using a light gray ink. This is Simon Says Stamp Fog ink. Any light gray ink is going to work for this. I just thought it would give just kind of a nice bit of pattern to the um, card base. And I didn't clean my stamps off very well between using the Versafine and using this. So some areas are darker than others, but I was actually okay with that. I kind of liked how it just added some variation as well to the background without being, you know, completely overwhelming. I didn't want this to take center stage. So once I was done stamping my background, I can then arrange all those colored and die cut flowers and leaves on my card front here. And I'm just going to arrange them how I want, which is basically kind of on the right and the lower right of this card. And once I've got them all arranged, the easiest thing to do is to grab a piece of press and seal like cling film which I just love and I keep this in my office at all times and I keep using the same old piece over and over again that I've been using for months. I just keep it stored on top of the box and press that into place and it clings onto all of those flowers and leaves so I can flip it over and then cover the backs of these with foam tape. So then I can peel off the backing of the foam tape. Now I can flip over the press and seal and reposition all of these in one pass, making it super simple. So line those all up, press down to adhere the foam tape to the card base and then peel off that piece of press and seal and set it aside for the next project. And that finished off the flowers. Um, off camera, I had die cut the Mr. and Mrs. die cuts from the Mr. and Mrs. Honey Cuts dies from Honey Bee. And then to complete the sentiment, I'm using the Mr. and Mrs. stamp set. And I have some light pink cardstock here that I used my anti-static powder tool on again. And I'm just going to stamp these sentiments with that same Versafine Onyx Black ink. I could leave them just stamped. It looks fine. But like I said, Versafine takes a while to dry. And for whatever reason, especially on color cardstock, it can take even longer. It's, or at least that's just how it seems to me. And I always end up smearing it. So I covered these with that same clear embossing powder and then um, melted that with my heat tool so that I don't go and smear it when I cut these down and adhere them to my card. So melted that with my heat tool and then I used my little Tim Holtz tonic guillotine trimmer to trim these into narrower little strips and then to trim off the ends so that they're two separate sentiments. So once I've got these trimmed, I can now start adhering all of this to my card front. And to adhere all these sentiments, I'm going to use a combination of the foam tape as well as my multimedia matte adhesive from Ranger because I'd use the multimedia matte to adhere the Mr. and Mrs. die cuts together because I die cut it from white cardstock and then the outline from black. So I had that sitting there. So that worked to adhere all of these sentiments over top of my images. And for the areas that I have um, that I put the multimedia matte adhesive on there, I'm going to put acrylic blocks on top of them just for a few minutes just to let that dry so it stays flat and adheres to those heat embossed flowers. So that just gives it that little extra weight to press it down. I'm going to do the same thing with that Mrs. die cut because it's got the multimedia matte um, to adhere it. So put acrylic block there, let it sit for a few minutes, and then it's good to go. And then there's a final little bit of embellishment on the front of my card. I have some green confetti from my stash. So I kind of sprinkled that amongst my flowers and sentiments here. And I'm just going to adhere those into place with that same multimedia matte adhesive. Just picking them up with my little jewel picker and pressing those into place. I originally was only going to stamp the inside of the card with the flowers in gray just to be done. But instead decided to ink them up with the distress inks. So I inked them up with the sponge, the flowers with the sponge sugar, and then I just used the corner of my mustard seed ink pad to ink up the centers just to give it that little extra bit of color. And I did the same thing with the leaves. I inked them up with the peeled paint and then used the corner of the mowed lawn ink pad just to add a little bit of the different green to that. And then I'm going to stamp those onto the inside of the card. And then I pulled more sentiments from the Mr. and Mrs. stamp set. And I'm going to line those up on my grid sheet here so that I can pick them up with one block and just stamp them at once. So it'll say love and kisses and best wishes. And once I've got those lined up, pick those up with my acrylic block and then I can stamp that onto the inside of the card with that Versafine Onyx Black ink. 
and this will finish off my card. So as always, there will be a link below the video to my blog post with links to all the supplies used. You can check that out below if you're interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping and commenting on my videos. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next one. Bye.